Hi, I'm Karen Sutherland from Edible Eden Design and as you can see I'm not in my usual urban space in my, in my really tightly packed garden looking for spaces to grow annual veggies which is why I have expanded down to my neighbour and friend Deb's front garden as you've seen in other videos. So here there's 40 acres, there's heaps of space here and I'm trying to plant lots of winter veggies and there needs to be a lot of protection for any of the brassica family. So I've already planted in the previous videos, you would have seen uh, in a large mesh structure over there that we've made up. There's broccoli, I've cut, there's purple and green sprouting broccoli and a dwarf broccoli and there's some Brussels sprouts as well. So now I've retrieved my trusty shovel, labelled, don't touch Karen's shovel. I like it very much. Uh, I also want to draw your attention to the fact that we're looking for the irrigation pipe. Now before you do any um, incorporating of organic matter through soil you need to locate where your irrigation is so that you don't put holes in that so I can simply kind of turn it and that is not as detrimental to the soil as as completely very old school flipping it over like so now look some people prefer to do that it's entirely up to you but I've already loosened the soil profile an eye on where my pipe is and you can see the soil is a lot more moist after the recent rain than some of the material I'm incorporating through and you can see it incorporates quite well the tech line is good to be exposed if possible and then covered over with mulch I just need to know where it is so I'm making quite a wide soil bed so that my vegetables can access a wide area for nutrients and water. So I'm mulching, even though I'm not ready to plant, I just have to keep the soil covered. And I'm actually going to do an experiment, as I've done in my neighbour Deb's garden in the city, where I'm going to put the same crops on either side, in each side of this garden bed, and have one side with straw mulch and the other side with jute matting. So the type used in revegetation planting. So we'll see how that goes. You just cannot leave your soil bare unless you're doing a bit of a clearing out to help remove pests and overwintering, over, overwintering insects and even diseases actually. That's a time when you can clear out your soil and allow the cold weather to really get in there and and clear out your pest uh, pest problem for you so just summarizing what we've been doing here doing a little experiment planting half these vegetable seedlings in jute matting which is usually do, used for indigenous tree planting or indigenous planting so i thought well i had some spare why not try to put veggies side by side so i've got purple sprouting broccoli one on either side one in straw with a protective pot at the moment to um, prevent slater and earwig attack in the early stages of the plant's development. These very young seedlings are more prone to attack before they set up their own little defences. So essentially it, in the very beginning stages is when you need to protect your seedlings. They're just like little babies. So I'm running side by side comparisons with purple sprouting broccoli, green sprouting broccoli. These are really good in urban spaces too, not just in these big open country gardens because they produce continuously you're not just waiting for one head to develop over a three or four month period or, or even longer and then we're moving into Brussels, uh, Brussels sprouts hardy little devils and moving into a couple of dwarf midget broccolis so we're going to see what those do and of course we've protected against the cabbage moth we've got a star picket as a permanent structure and we've put a plastic plant tube over the top of that to prevent the netting breaking and a strong wire We've held down the edges with some old steel star pickets and rocks and bricks and things like that. And the seedlings are starting to pop up and look a bit more healthy after a few days because I've given them a, a drink yesterday with some seaweed or sea salt solution and power feed, or sorry, the power feed, which is sea salt plus fish emulsion to boost them up a bit. So here I'm planting some Chinese broccoli, a really quick growing green that will kind of be finished fairly soon. So uh, in a couple of months. So I've run out of mesh and so I'm using what, what I can. So here I've got a structure made by my lovely partner, 
engineer partner. So this is the great collaboration between engineers and gardeners. They sometimes disagree on the way to do things, but engineers are great to help you make structures like this necessary for your garden. So find yourself an engineer if you can, is my advice, or someone that likes metal, working with metal. So here's my little slightly leggy Chinese broccolis and I'm protecting them with some hoops and it's a really, really simple structure and just pulling this fabric tight. This is a frost or hail protection fabric, very light and soft. It allows light through and also importantly, it allows moisture through and good airflow. So I've simply tied up the end with a bit of cotton tie and I'm just gonna hold it down with a, with a brick. You could use a rock, whatever you like, just to stop the cabbage moths going in. And so I've got quite a lot, quite a lot of seedlings in here and they're all protected from the dreaded cabbage moth. This is the rest of the summary of our major line of vegetable plantings. So this side will have straw around it. Again, the straw's not around the young Chinese broccoli and bok choy seedlings at the moment, which if you want to have a little peek. This is under some frost or hail protection fabric. So there they are under there. Just getting going. They've had a little drink yesterday from Power Feed, which is sea salt plus plus fish emulsion mix. And on the other side, we've got some old curtain fabric, we've got some spinach seedlings, and also some bok choy. And this is protecting against cabbage moth. It's also protecting against sparrows and other birds that like to peck leafy vegetables. So many types of protection are needed in your veggie garden.